And speaking of all things China related, we told you a little bit earlier that uh, the Senate overwhelmingly passing a measure that would push for delisting Chinese companies on exchanges here. Uh, Senator Martha McSally joins us right now, Republican in uh, the beautiful state of Arizona. Senator, were, were you among those supporting this? Of course. Uh, look, Neil, this is part of a multifaceted approach. I think uh, Americans are waking up that China is our adversary. Uh, we need to stop having double standards for them, uh, for them to be on the New York Stock Exchange. They need the same sort of oversight and auditing standards as American companies. Uh, we should be looking at Chinese uh, companies that are operating in America. We've got local law enforcement using Chinese drones uh, to monitor contact tracing. I'm working on legislation related to that. Uh, there's so much more that uh, China has been doing over the last 20 years, and it's time for us to wake up and in every way hold them accountable for their malevolent behavior, hold them accountable for this pandemic, uh, and have not have a double standard anymore. Where is this whole China rift going, though, Senator? You think about it here, it, it could uh, impinge on the trade deal. We don't see that yet in yeah. agricultural purchases, we might. But do you worry that whatever the justification of your position, that... Um, it, it, it's 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 going to really damage that economic relationship and and we might get damaged as well well what i worry more about is that they have been on a several decade path to try and replace us as the world leader uh, and that needs to stop and the window is closing uh, but with american resolve and american unity and our other partners standing up i think china just needs to be confronted for their bad behavior that includes building islands in the south china sea and militarizing them uh, that includes unleashing uh, this pandemic and then continuing to cover it up uh, and then blaming the u.s army and silencing people in internally. Uh, it includes so many elements of this, and I think people are realizing now, I've, I've been dealing with national security for 30 years. I've never trusted a communist. I'm not going to start now. But people, I think, are realizing the threat. There are security elements to it. There are economic elements to it. I think, again, consumers should have choices. They should know if things are made in China. Uh, I'm working on that issue as well for online pur purchases. Uh, it's, it's really, we've got to work together with our allies. China needs to change their behavior if they want to be responsible in the world, but they're not right now. But what changed, Senator? I can definitely see the coronavirus and how they handle that, what they yeah. knew and when and whether they were hoodwinking us. But the, 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 the militarization of islands in the South China Sea and elsewhere, that was going on for a long, yes. long time. Concern about whether they rip us off and whether we're, they were honest. Yeah. And that, that has been out there for a long, long time. Yes. It just seems to me that using the virus as the catalyst to go and, yeah. and fix or, or address long-time sources of friction might be an overreach. But... Well, this. I think it's just I think it's just waking people up. Again, we on the security side have been very concerned, uh, but it's waking people up that they are irresponsible actors, reckless and dangerous. And now we have American lives, loved ones who are lost, livelihoods lost. And so I think this is a catalyst for a lot of my constituents to realize uh, China's dangerous activity over the decades. Now, uh, on the delisting thing, if those companies are delisted, do you ever worry yeah. that China? comes back and says, well, we're not going to buy your debt. And then, you, know, you know what I'm saying? That it just, uh, the tit for tat gets so over the top yeah. that, you know, we, they just we, need we, to be, we could lead uh, to a worldwide recession. Uh, look, they just need to be responsible and there needs to be no double standards. If, if a U.S. company has to meet certain requirements and auditing to be on the New York Stock Exchange, shouldn't we ask that of uh, Chinese companies as well? I think that's a reasonable approach that most Americans would agree to. It's time for people to wake up. Uh, China has been um, moving in a path, uh, using these double standards, stealing our technology on a path to replace us. And we've got to look for a way to have them steer in a different path. I'm not looking for confrontation, uh, but they need to be held accountable for their behavior and no more double standards. Do you think the trade deal is now kaput, that whatever they've agreed to, whatever we've agreed to, that, that, that there's such a chill that it's over? Uh, it's it's up to them. I mean, for us, I think President Trump uh, stood up to take on uh, China and start fighting for American workers and American companies uh, and negotiated this deal. Uh, I think it's up, uh, up for China to implement it the way that they agree to while we continue to work diplomatic, economic and other elements of uh, Chinese behavior. Uh, and we work here to bring manufacturing home. I mean, that's really an important thing. You look at what can we do? We can incentivize companies 
companies to bring manufacturing home for jobs in America, for national security in America, health security, PPE, pharmaceuticals, critical minerals, all the things that we know we want to be not beholden to China uh, and, and like we've seen in this situation. So there's a lot of things we can do uh, to help Americans, help our security, help our health and help, help American jobs. All right. We'll watch it closely. Senator, thank you very much for taking the time. Thanks, Neil.